Hey everyone, who likes unboxings? Everyone? All right, unboxing time. <laughs> oh, I feel like I've done so many of these lately, but I tell you, this year, something about this year, I have seen so many good deals on items that I am excited about and or items I've been looking for for so long. So this is just an incredibly lucky year for my collection. <laughs> and this is also the year I decided I would start talking about my collection on this YouTube channel. So I do hope you're all enjoying it. Please leave comments on these videos as you watch them. It really helps to get your feedback. This channel's still kind of small. We've got a, a small but dedicated following of hair people that I'm very excited about and, and hopefully we can get some good conversations going in the comments. Please let me know what things you want to see going forward. Um, and I will be happy to oblige if there is enough interest for all of these things. So now, on we go to the box. This has kind of an interesting little story because I saw this item and got way too excited about it before I even knew that it was up for sale. So uh, a f well over a month ago now, the seller of this item posted a photo of it in an Antiques and Oddities group on Facebook. I don't know if I've mentioned this yet on this channel, but if you are a budding collector of hair or other Antiques and Oddities, um, it will behoove you to join a Facebook oddities group because that is a great way to meet dealers who sell the kinds of things that you're interested in and sometimes it's just a great opportunity to find specific items that aren't for sale on other major websites like eBay or Etsy. So this was posted by the 2B seller of this item and I got so excited. This was like 3 a.m. when I saw this post. I was I mean, pretty nocturnal at the time, so it wasn't a crazy time for me to be awake, but I was considering going to bed pretty soon. <laughs> However, I saw this item and I needed to go down a quick little research rabbit hole. <laughs> so that is one <laughs> way to know if that piece is for you. If you get that excited that you drop your work and everything you're doing at 3 a.m. to go and research it, <laughs> it is perhaps the item for you. It wasn't until after I had gone down this research rabbit hole that I found that this item was actually going to be up for an auction on one of those aforementioned Facebook oddities groups. So, I of course needed to put in a bid for the auction and I tell you, I actually got this for a really, really good deal. It was absolutely a steal. The seller, Corkscrew Oddities, nice little sticker with their logo on there along with this, that's super fun. And this is great because had it not been for that Oddities group on Facebook, I would have not have known this seller. This is not someone I had ever purchased from before. So that is just a really great way to meet some other dealers and other collectors. So I can't wait to show you this piece and explain why I got so excited researching it. This piece was definitely one that I wanted more for the uh, research possibilities and the curiosity inspired in me uh, more so than necessarily the aesthetic artwork of it but let me show you here so here we have a hair sample with the envelope it came in where it also says hair sample now this frame I should add is newer. Someone put this older lock of hair in envelope in this new frame. So this was initially not meant to be a framed piece at all. What got me so excited researching this is on the bottom of this envelope here you can see Montgomery Ward and Co. If you have not seen my video 
I believe it's called My Grudge Against Sears. I definitely recommend you go and watch that video because I talk about, among other things, <laughs> how Sears began as a mail order catalog in the Victorian era and how they sold hair jewelry at one point as part of that sales model. Montgomery Ward & Co. is a very similar situation. They were also a mail order catalog company. Now this may be Victorian, it may be Edwardian, just post-Victorian era. I don't yet know exactly what the date is on this, but I love it for the research possibilities. So when I saw this post on Facebook, there were of course a lot of comments speculating about what this hair sample could have been for and why it was in a Montgomery Ward envelope. As you can see, the hair's a little bit knotted now, but it is a long lock of hair that is really just tied up with a string in a little envelope. So, many people in those comments, we're, we're, <laughs> we're speculating that this was not for a hair jewelry situation, but that it was to match hair for a color for a hair piece, like a hair extension, like a switch, or perhaps even a wig, which is possible in the Victorian era, Edwardian era, and even into the 20s, 30s, and beyond, you could send in a sample of your own hair to be matched to a color for a hair piece that you would wear on your head. So this is possible. You could do this through these catalogs. You could also sometimes, um, in the case of the Victorian era, you could sometimes go to a drugstore down the street and, and leave a sample of your hair. So that is a possibility. However, I saw many people in the comments saying that it, it couldn't have been for hair jewelry or hair work or hair art. And I got to thinking, although sure, it may have been for a hairpiece, it may have been hair jewelry. Since we don't have a date, we have to do some research to figure that out, but there is some information here. There's an invoice number and a catalog number. I imagine the catalog number is like the identifier for what item they're ordering. Like a catalog, every number is ordered, so they'd put the number for what item they were looking for along with this sample. Article, it says braid. So whether that's a braid for a switch to put in the hair or a braid as in a chain braid of jewelry, yet to be determined. The price we see here appears to be $1.34. $1.3040.50 was a pretty common price near the end of the Victorian era for watch fobs and tangentially other pieces of hair jewelry. So it is not outside of the realm of possibility that this hair sample could have been to make hair jewelry. Now, <laughs> what happened, why it never got made into that, I do not know. It also, of course, could be a wig or a switch, but what really got me on my tangent at 3 a.m. over a month ago was searching through Montgomery Ward catalogs. I was able to search through a couple of them, and I was able to confirm that they did both sell hair jewelry and match hair color for hair pieces, so both are possible. In the couple of catalogs I looked through that night, I was not able to find this exact catalog number and price. So that tells me that I just haven't found the right catalog yet. Of course, there were many, many catalogs across many different years. Sears, Montgomery Ward, a lot of these mail order catalogs that started in the Victorian era went on for a very long time. So we don't know yet what year it was, but we have a serial number an order number and a name. S.J. Harrington is the name. Serial number 22, order number 11,359. 
for an article braid for the price of $1.34. So this is very exciting to me because it means I have a lot of research to do. I have catalogs to pick through. I have things to discover. And I got this for, for such a decent price, as I mentioned, from these wonderful sellers that I, I just had to have this delightful little piece. So then I can have it to, to hold and to reference. And as I go on my journey to try to discover exactly which catalog this came from, I'm, I'm really just very delighted. Now, <laughs> there is a bit of a note here on the back. This was, according to the seller, the story that uh, the person who they got it from was telling. They believed that the hair actually belonged to Ethel Harrington and that this name, S.J. Harrington, is for Silas J. Harrington. Ethel Harrington was apparently a, um, an Olympian, an athlete, so this person clearly thought this was um, at least mildly famous hair. I don't know if that's the case. That's sort of a situation where, yes, we have a name, but we do not have a letter, a signature. We, we, it didn't come from the original family, so antiques collectors call this provenance. Provenance is how you identify a piece, how you know if it is what we say it is, if the hair is who we say it belongs to. Normally you need very good, solid documentation of ownership, of coming directly from that person, directly from that person's family member, and, and you need more than this. It's not impossible, it's certainly not impossible, but something that you do run into with hair collecting, um, is that a lot of people will claim that it is famous person's hair and you really need good solid documentation and provenance uh, <laughs> to, to authenticate that. And I, I do want to talk a little more about provenance in a future video. Um, I think I, I have some fun videos planned for uh, hair jewelry and hair art that was legitimately made out of the hair of famous historical figures. So I certainly do, in those upcoming videos, want to discuss more about how we know that it is correct and what proven provenance counts as good documentation versus what might be a little suspect. So regardless of whether or not this is a famous Olympian's hair, I am just delighted at the possibility of being able to find what this person was ordering. Presumably, again, with the item number in the catalog, if I were to find the correct year for the catalog, I can probably tell exactly what they were trying to order. Whether it was hair jewelry, a wig, a hair piece, and we will know once and for all why this person sent this lock of hair in this Montgomery Ward envelope, what they were trying to get in return. We may never know if they got it. Did they get what they ordered? Who's to say? <laughs> but I'm quite delighted, excited by this little piece. <laughs> Again, anything that gets me so excited that I just drop everything and go on a quick research tangent. I, I saw enough to know what the possibilities are, and now we just need a little more time to nail it down. So of course, if I find any more details, it might take me a while. There were a lot of Montgomery Ward catalogs and not all of them are just at my disposal to view um, without some really deep searching. So it may take a while, but do let me know in the comments if you would like updates about this or even just more information on the topic of mail order catalogs. Um, as always, I love to get your opinion and while the channel's still small, you can really help me shape it in the direction it's going toward because as much as I love hair art and hair jewelry, I have so much that I can and want to talk about. So I would like to hear from you 
what you want to learn about next and what you want to see and hear from. So if you have not already, please subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss those future videos. And I want to give a huge thank you, shout out to my supporters on Patreon. You guys are awesome and you're really helping me to keep the art of hair work alive. On that note, that is all I have for you today. I have a not very pretty, but a very exciting lock of hair. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.